this ghost town is all that remains of a once busy port that died a long time ago. Swakin, on the Red Sea coast of Sudan, is now in ruins, though the carvings on the mosques suggest that it was once a town of importance. Swakin's harbour was once filled with British troop transports and soldiers. It was the port that supplied General Gordon in his campaign against the African tribe, the Bejar. But it wasn't cannons that destroyed Swakin. It was the substance from which the town was built, coral. Larger ships could not navigate through the coral lining the entrance to the port, so it was abandoned. Coral is the work of millions of small sea anemone-like creatures called polyps. Brain corals, so named for their resemblance to an animal brain, secrete a rock-like defensive crust around their soft bodies. Others are more delicate, like fan coral. Most of the Red Sea is lined with reefs, hard coral which can tear ships' hulls apart. Shipwrecks in these tropical waters are quickly occupied by the very coral that sank them. North of Swakin and offshore from Port Sudan is the Wingate Reef, the resting place of one wreck in particular. This ship is the Umbria, a ship in service during the Second World War. Umbria was scuttled by her Italian captain in 1941. Over the years, the coral has laid claim to the ship, hardly recognizable now that it is wrapped in its coral-encrusted shell. In the last 20 years, much has been learned about the large variety of fish that inhabit the coral reefs. The most intriguing argument that is still hotly debated among scientists is, why are there so many different species of fish that live in and off the coral? One of the many species that live near the wreck is the black-eyed puffer fish. It feeds off the coral, breaking off the tips of branches and swallowing them whole. The larger starry puffer has a more complex diet. It hunts for sea urchins and starfish. Puffer fish swim by waving the dorsal fin at the same time as the anal fin, just in front of the tail. This allows them to regulate their speed and even to swim backwards.
The puffer can also do exactly what its name implies. Although unconcerned by the presence of the diver's lights, when threatened, this fish can puff itself up until it looks like a football. There are a number of different species of puffers with different patterning. This particular species is important to the area because it hunts the crown of thorns starfish. In large enough numbers, this starfish can destroy huge areas of coral. Over the reef nearby sweeps a huge but harmless visitor, a manta ray, flying along on wings that can span up to six meters. As a small grey reef shark passes by, jellyfish propel themselves through the water. Like the shark and the manta, they are open water creatures. Common around the wreck of the Umbria are gatherins. This species is known as the leopard sweet lips or grunt. When it's threatened, the shoal forms into a tight ball. Grunts use overhangs in the coral as shelter from the glare of the sun and hunt for crabs by night. The black gatherin has thick lips which help in tackling awkward prey like crabs. Jacks often hunt in groups surrounding their prey, causing them to panic. The predator simply snaps up the fish which flee in the wrong direction. A shoal of surgeon fish display their white tail band where they carry the sharp scalpel-like spines that give them their name. This striped surgeon has the little yellow spine sheathed just in front of the tail. A unicorn fish glides by, bearing the distinctive head shape which gives it its name. This particular area is charted as being a danger zone, but divers frequently take the risk, anxious to witness the stunning variety of fish around the wreck. It's not only the fish that attract interest. This particular coral is between 10 and 15 years old. Sergeant majors are a species of damselfish, named after their black transverse stripes. Damsels are the most abundant fish in the coral reefs. They live on plankton and often swim high in the water column, camouflaged in the pattern of surface waves by their sharp banding pattern. In the Red Sea, Two species of sergeant majors coexist. The second has scissor-like markings at the base of its tail. Their generic name is Arabic, Abu Defdaf, which means the father of, or the one with, stripes. Feeding off plankton are the white-throated damselfish and the black and white half-and-half -half damselfish. All these reef fishes feed near the coral because it provides many places of escape and shelter from the predatory species. Clownfish has taken a further step in the developing interaction between fish and coral. At the first sign of danger, the clownfish takes shelter in the tentacles of a giant anemone. 
The sting of the creature, usually fatal to other species, has no effect on the clownfish. This is because it is armed with, and protected by, an extra thick coating of body slime. The fish also has bright, distinct markings, which are usually associated with warning potential predators to stay away. But in this case, the warning coloration may discourage other fish species from approaching the anemones too. Some species of clownfish favor just one kind of anemone. This strange alliance can last many years. There are some advantages in this relationship to the otherwise passive anemone. Perhaps the clownfish keeps the anemone free from debris and irritating waste matter. It may even aerate the water. Perhaps the most obvious advantage is that the clownfish feed on plankton and generally scavenge in the immediate area. The fish then bring back the food, some of which is discarded and then consumed by the anemone. Another damselfish, the three-spot desolis. It has one spot on the forehead and one on each side. As the fish grows, the spots stay about the same size. This Dacillus also has a relationship with anemones, though not as close as the clownfish's, but it is still immune to its sting. This is the black and white Dacillus, a widespread coral fish known also as a banded puller. It uses the coral as a hiding place when danger threatens. The coral of the Wingate Reef, where the Umbria came to rest, has entirely colonized the ship now. One of the more brilliantly colored shoals is comprised of Antheus. They are a form of grouper, usually the largest fish on the reef. Antheus are renowned in scientific circles for being the first fish species in which it was discovered that sex changes occurred. Within the shoal, if adult males, which are purple in color, are removed or lost to predators, the larger dominant females change sex to replace them. They also change from orange in color to the purple of the male. It is now known that sex changing is common behavior in reef fish, such as the wrasse and the parrotfish. In some species, there are two types of male, those born genetically male and those which change from female to male but still remain genetically female. In many species, genetic males no longer exist. The population doesn't need males as the females are equipped to perform both roles themselves. Because of their abundance here in the Red Sea, the brightly colored species of butterfly fish signal the well-being of the coral. The more species of butterfly fish present, the better the health of the coral. The reason for their startling variations in color and hue can be due to a number of possible explanations. 
their colors make them recognizable to rival territorial males who vigorously defend areas up to 50 meters across. Additionally, their markings distinguish individuals so they can be recognized by others of their species. Also, the colors help to camouflage the fish against the varied colors of the coral itself. Found only in the Red Sea is the masked or blue-cheeked butterfly fish. It feeds mostly on sponges at night. By day, it hangs motionless beneath coral overhangs. How did this astonishing variety of fish evolve? Probably, families of fish species became more diverse evolving over long periods of time. Populations isolated by geography or currents may have developed their own behavior to match their environment until eventually they became a separate identifiable species. Surprisingly, there are fewer different species of fish in the Red Sea because in geological terms, these waters formed recently. They are merely 20,000 years old. This is a batfish, not related to the butterflies at all. A baby imperial angelfish bears a complex but distinctive design. The adult's markings are not quite as striking. Even more spectacular is the angelfish known as the regal angel. It's quite common on the Wingate Reef. The wealth of variety in nature is superbly illustrated here. Perhaps these fish's only rivals in diversity are the insects. The Red Sea Banifish's streamer is an elongation of the first ray of the dorsal fin. It waves around as the fish swims. There may be several reasons for this streamer. Firstly, it can aid identification among its own species, but it can also provide predators with a target which is not critical to the individual fish's survival. A predator may attack and be left with simply the end of a long fin. fish move in shoals. Their sharp teeth form a continuous cutting surface, like a parrot's beak. Parrotfish and surgeonfish often swim together. Most of the parrotfish species don't actually bite chunks off the coral. They use their beaks to scrape at the thin layer of algae that covers the rocky surfaces of the reef. It is only the males of the larger parrotfish species that bite and ingest the coral whole. Identifying individual species is made difficult by the wealth of difference between males, females and even juveniles. Variations in patterning from one ocean region to the next can also hamper identification. This large male blue parrotfish does feed directly on large amounts of coral. D. 
Deeper inside the wreck lives the coral grouper, the smallest member of the grouper family to be found here. Grasses are among the most typical reef fish. All told, there are 600 different species. The checkerboard wrasse hunts for small invertebrates. The Napoleon wrasse is the biggest of the family. It is prized in Southeast Asia as a delicacy. Close by, a large predator lurks in the gloom, a Tukula grouper. Groupers are unafraid of divers. They can reach several hundred kilograms in weight. They too are good indicators of the health of a coral reef. If they are removed by overfishing depleting their stocks, the structure of the reef community can change significantly. The shy squirrel fish is found near the entrance to the hold of the Umbria and its secret cargo. Moray eels lurk in the crevices. Since the war, more than one salvage company has reported that it would be far too big a risk to attempt to bring the Umbria to the surface. The coral has since taken over not only the ship, but her cargo. The delicacy of the environment that has formed here since the war belies the destructive nature of the Umbria's mission. When the Italian crew opened the ship's cargo bay in 1941, they found thousands of tons of shells, landmines and bombs for the Italian army fighting in Somaliland. Those explosives are still here today. They've been rusted by seawater, but are still extremely sensitive. It is ironic indeed that from a sunken ship carrying enough arms to destroy a city, there grew a beautiful undersea world of great diversity inhabited by the citizens of the coral.